Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. Previously on the new Fly Fisher, we were in Sheridan, Wyoming. Check this out. There's one. Nice. That thing hit like a ton of bricks, man. Yeah. All right. Gorgeous. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yep. Whoa, that's yeah. a good fish. Nice fish. Fantastic. Fish just oh ate the hopper. <laughs> 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 That is just amazing. Ready? See ya. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Biggest brown trout ever caught on a streamer in the Bighorn River. Stories don't get any better than that. They really don't. Welcome back to Wyoming. Sheridan, Wyoming to be exact a wide open land fantastically dissected by a vast artery system of rivers chock full of fly friendly fish. Wyoming is a well known destination for fly anglers during the spring and summer months. However, as summer turns to fall, many anglers put their fly rods away and hit the hills looking to other outdoor pursuits. This in turn leaves the waterways surrounding Sheridan, Wyoming all but abandoned. The fall time is the right time for those looking for world-class fishing, massive populations of wild native trout, and near zero angling pressure. Sheridan, Wyoming is steeped in Western tradition. Tradition which includes a history of great fly fishing. Main Street statues offer a constant reminder of the nearby rivers and creeks and the fish they hold. Peter Widener owns and operates the fly shop of the Bighorns, and his operation is located smack dab in the middle of Sheridan. It's a full service fly shop and guide service fishing out of Sheridan and all points Wyoming. You can fish guided public water, or you can have access to many of the local ranches and fish private water all through the fly shop of the Bighorns. This day, we're fishing a small freestone river not too far from the shop. It's October and we're fishing mice for brown trout. Many of the rivers and creeks surrounding Sheridan, Wyoming have native brown, cutthroat, and rainbow trout. Today, I'm stringing up a six weight rod with a weight forward floating six weight line. The mice we are using are a custom pattern tied by Brett Smith from Sheridan. Brett is known as the developer of the Palomino Midge, and his hantavirus mouse has proven deadly for trout in Wyoming and beyond. Peter, October in Sheridan County, Wyoming, and you asked me to tie on a mouse? That's craziness. Well, not here. You know, in, in our area, we like to fish mice quite a bit, quite often. Yeah, not and just at night? Not just at night. No, we don't need a full moon. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> We throw them during the day, yep. uh, we debarb them, and yep. it's, a, it's a local pattern tied by a guy named Brett Smith. Yep. We, we call him Sydney. So this is his pattern. He calls the hantavirus, but we call it Sydney the mouse. He's kind of a mascot for our fly shop. So uh, how do you want me to fish this? A couple different ways. You can dead drift it, you can swing it, or you can slow strip it back. Um, whatever you do, a little bit of pop's good. Yeah. Give it some lifelike movement, All right. and uh, see if we can hoax a big brown to come up and eat it. All right, man, show me. All right. So this time of year, the water temps like, I'll take a temp real quick. Normally I do for safety points. Like with fish in the summer, we're fishing a lot of hoppers and dry flies, but we don't fish. Our company policy is anything above 65 degrees, we, we stop fishing. Right. If it means we give a refund, we give a refund. But this time of year, I take temperatures to see how lethargic the fish are gonna be. Yep. And so if I get any temps that are in the high 30s, you can't move your flies too fast. Um, but this time of year, we're gonna be like low 40s, I guess. We'll be able to trick a few fish to come up to mice. Yeah, see we're at like 41 degrees, 42 degrees. It's like perfect for mouse fishing. You can fish them upstream, straight across, downstream. Any way you can do it to access a place where you think the fish are sitting. Get it in that slack water. Fish, nice. That was a cutty maybe, kind of a light colored brown or a cutthroat. Warm up spot, huh? Well, I got a scuba diver that hides in that hole. 
brown trout. A little brown. Nice. In October. Something like that, a little brown. That's fantastic. Good start. Brown trout are most comfortable in the 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degree Fahrenheit temperature range. This is when they feed readily and are willing to move around in a pool or run. When temperatures get as warm as 65 degrees Fahrenheit, angling a fish may cause them harm. Important to note that as temperatures rise, the fish will be at more risk of post-release mortality. Conversely, as the temperatures drop into the low to mid 30s, trout metabolism slows down drastically and they may not be willing to expend the energy to chase a meal. When the water gets cold, a general rule of thumb is to slow things down, big time. But the water is in the low 40s, and today it's perfect for mousing. Nice fish. All right. Who would have thought, man, brown trout on a mouse in October. That's fantastic. Pretty awesome, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's it's funny because it's it's an immediate reaction. That's right? The right water's 41 that. degrees, yeah. they're not lethargic yet. No. Nope. And as soon as that fly hit, it was on. Maybe we'll get into a big bruiser today. That's a good fish. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Oh Mouse my eater. gosh. All right, let's take a look. For my first Sheridan brown trout here in Wyoming. Man, that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at that. All wild. All wild and angry hungry. It's pretty cool. Sweet fish, man. Thanks, buddy. Gone. Dude. On that mouse. Hey. What a fantastic fish. Thanks, man. We have three big tailwaters close by, and then the freestones we have access to are, I mean, without even giving names, there's there's tons of freestones we can fish with all wild trout populations. And it's amazing. It's some of the best dry fly fishing you can get during certain times of the year, and some of the best streamer fishing you can get certain times of the year, and that's just within our area. Um, there's other parts of the states that are probably just as good, but Sheridan's pretty special. With so many opportunities to find fishable water in the Sheridan, Wyoming area, it pays to cut the guessing and hire a guide. Not only a local expert on the water, but one that can teach you about fishing in their own backyard, their own way. I'd start at the top and I'd work down. Um, I usually don't start at the bottom with a mouse. Usually at the top, I get a nice downstream end and then I dance it all the way through the run. Um, if you what? rush into water too quickly, I feel like you spook the fish, you let them know you're coming. Yeah. So I like to sneak up, come from the side. So these fish are not two liter shy then? They're not two liter shy, no. And with a mouse, you know, we're disturbing the water pretty good with a big rodent on top. Like how spooky are these fish? Am I spooky. ruining this? No, that's why I like to stay back like you're doing and you're casting out in front of you a ways. Even farther is fine. But they're spooky, I mean, the water's clear. Any kind of stomping of your feet, these things are gone. When fishing late season mice, presentation is key to incite a strike. These fish are not leader shy, and your job is to cover the water effectively. Fishing a mouse, you've got a couple of different options for retrieval of, of said mouse. Um, and I'm gonna go through the, the three that I'm using today. Um, when I'm fishing upstream, what I like to do is cast 45, at least 45 degrees up, put a bow or a downstream mend in the, uh, in the line and then jiggle the tip of the rod to give that fly a skittering dancing motion. That's the first way. The second way is if I'm, if I'm uh, fishing upstream again, what I'll do is I'll let it dead, dead drift all the way down till it gets 90 degrees or perpendicular to me and then I'll do the same. I'll get, it, get that fly moving. Oftentimes the dead stick of the mouse uh, not doing anything, coming back to life is enough to get these brown trout going. Now the third way I'm doing it is just like swinging for Atlantic salmon or brook trout, where with a high rod tip, you create a wake such that that mouse skitters across, 
creating a V behind it that drives brown trout crazy. I'll throw a streamer in there in a sec when you're... <clears throat> oh, got him. Oh, buddy. Yeah, that a baby. You called it, man. You said there was a fish in this pool. Now, we're got bar barbless. Look how he drops his nose and digs in. Look, that's a beautiful buttery brown, man, too, man. Oh, man. Oh, what a take. This water is so clear. Oh, what a fish. You could see that fish come up and roll on it. Absolutely amazing. On a mouse, can't beat it. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Beautiful brown. What a fantastic brown trout. Rodent eater. <laughs> Rodent eater. <laughs> now, one of the great things about fishing in October in Wyoming is that, you know, if your hands are wet and you handle these fish, you're not doing them any harm. As long as you're keeping their gills in, in the water, we can unbutton this guy. And I want to show you something really neat. Here's the good side of this beautiful brown trout. Now, this guy has had a life of adversity because if you look on his left side, he's blind. I mean, it shows the tenacity and how strong brown trout can be um, for this guy to get this big with only one eye. Just incredible. All right, buddy, you know what? We're gonna let you go. I'll pull you into some deeper water here. Let you go and you can uh, feed up for the winter time. All right, buddy, thank you so much. What a fantastic fish. Swims way back to the deep. Unbelievable, absolutely perfect. Coming up, the snow starts to fall and we hit the mountains. As the day comes to an end, the snow gets heavier and we decide to fish a bit back toward the vehicles. I generally am not a proponent of fishing back down. Yeah, it right? works great. But you know what? We didn't catch anything out of here on the way up. So why not give it a shot? And anytime you can catch a brown trout on a mouse, yeah. take it. Let me see if I can get them up here. You know, Peter, we were talking earlier today that, you know, it's a lot of people think that when you go to an exotic destination of any kind, whether it's, whether it's Wyoming or Mexico, right? right? It's all about the size of the fish. Well, it's not. Many times it's about the technique that you use to take and release these, this fish. I've said it many times, we're in October here. It's snowing, it's 32 degrees, and we're taking fantastic brown trout on mice flies. You can't beat that anywhere in the world. It's not about the size, it's about the play. It's about getting out, just pops out, and dancing with wonders just like this. So don't focus on the size of the fish, focus on the experience, focus on the method of catching these fish and letting them go. Brown trout on a mouse pattern? <laughs> I would have never thought. Pretty cool. We decide to call it a day and head back to the fly shop. Tomorrow, we head into Tongue Canyon and hit the Tongue River. A short drive from downtown Sheridan finds you in the Tongue Canyon in the Bighorn National Forest. What a difference a day makes. Well, this is fishing in the fall time in Wyoming, but you know what? It doesn't make a difference what the weather does. You still need to fish it as you find it. So I'm gonna take some time today and, uh, and show you a couple of techniques that I like to do when the weather turns south. 
Uh, it's cold, it's below freezing, uh, but that doesn't mean that those fish still won't be, won't be feeding, won't be active. You just need to adjust your presentation. So in just a minute, I'm gonna show you exactly what I do when the temperatures drop and fishing gets tough. So even though it's a bluebird sunny day, I noticed on the drive in that most of the river was in shadow because of the depth of the canyon that we're in. Um, so I'm gonna pretend that it's actually a cloudy day because there isn't much sun that's touching the river. So this is a slip bobber and it was designed by our good friend, Phil Rowley out of Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, and this bobber is designed so that you can fish extremely long leaders yet still be able to bring your leader into your fly rod if needed. And the way it's designed is quite ingenious. So what you do is you take the center pin out and you thread your leader through the hole down the middle. And it goes all the way through and out the other end. Take your, your indicator part and you pass your leader material, your tippet through the hole there as well. What you do is you find the depth that you want, take the pin out, make a loop with your leader, take the loop, put it down the hole of your indicator. You then take the pin and drop the pin into the center, effectively locking it in. But when you pull on that leader, the loop comes loose and you can fight the fish all the way into your rod. Let's see if we can catch one. A good way to ensure that you've got a drag-free drift when you're fishing with this uh, indicator and nymph system is cast 45 degrees up. And as that indicator comes perpendicular to you, get some slack and throw in something called a stacking mend, which throws the line upstream. It ultimately pulls the indicator out of the water and drives the nymphs down deep. And then you can simply feed line like you would on an indicator drift as per normal. And again, if any, you see any movement, lift gently to set the hook. So this is with no doubt the slowest way to fish this rig. The indicator is dictating the speed as the river flows. The indicator brings the flies, the nymphs down with it. You can change your depth to get right into the strike zone of the fish. And it's just a matter of constantly putting it in front of them, in front of them, in front of them until one decides it's time to eat. Fishing in the shoulder seasons, uh, you really need to understand and pay attention to what the environments are telling you on as to how to fish. I mean, today obviously is, is sub-freezing, it's cold. Uh, the fish are very lethargic, and uh, so that's why we switched to this 15-foot full sink tip, 350 grain sink tip, to get down to the bottom where we believe the fish will be, and you can slowly present it to them. If you put it right in front of the right fish at the right time, at the right speed, you never know, man. You could just come up with a, one of these trophy brown trout, um, rainbows, whatever. It's it's a slow game, but it's a game that if you put your if you put your time in and your effort in, you could very well be rewarded. But you know what? Even if you don't catch something, look at the environment that you're in. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm I am I've been fishing all day. Had a couple of bites. This is just wonderful. There's no reason why you need to catch fish to have fun, especially in an environment like this in Wyoming. It's just perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Fish. Fish, nice. All right. Perfect. You slow down, you take your time, and you just might get lucky. It's cold, it's crazy but it paid off. You know what? We slowed down, we went deep. Oh, it's a whitefish, fantastic. Hook pops out. Side catch, a brown trout. Mountain whitefish. How fun is that? Slow down, take it easy. Slow presentations. It doesn't matter what you catch up here. They're just fantastic. All right, that's super fun.
Well, there you have it. On shoulder seasons when the weather doesn't play along, it is vital that you slow things down and you finesse. A little finesse, you'll find sure success. That's for sure right here in Wyoming. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. For more on our series and fishing in Wyoming, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For everyone here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. And hopefully, we'll see you in the great state of Wyoming. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher television show. I really hope you enjoyed that full length episode. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now new episodes are going up all the time. So click that bell icon so that you're notified the next time we put one up.